God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Trinity of Love, let us call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have seen by our own fault in for to Justice, sir. 
Chorus, good Lord, ein Lied your ring depart from us. Favor of hear us for young mercies great, accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. God of grace, you pardon and absolve all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe the Holy Gospel. Therefore, we beseech you, merciful God, to grant us true repentance and your Holy Spirit, that those things may please you which we do this day, and that the rest of our lives hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to your, your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin, and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole. Amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, 
and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Oh, 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. I offer you these words in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. First of all, I want to say how good it is to share this day with you, to be with you. We do a lot of feasting in the American culture, in the Episcopal Church, and this is one of the two principal fast days of the entire Christian year. It is a very important day. We are in the right place. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts. So reads the opening prayer for the opening of Lent, which is contained in the Book of Common Prayer. Today we are asking God to make in us new hearts, contrite hearts. And from a faith perspective, the two are inseparably linked. And Ash Wednesday is the wake-up call to this truth. Over the years, there have been a couple of times that I've done something I know most of you have done which is to miss a sign while driving and turn up a one-way street the wrong way. 
Once when I was doing this, my wife said, we're on a one-way street. And I said, but we're only going one way. Uh -huh. Very funny, she said, turn around. Okay, an innocent mistake made with no real consequences. Ten years ago, this month, almost to this day, early on in my deployment as an army chaplain in Iraq, I was with the 372nd Military Police Battalion. I had 1,800 troops in my care. Most of us were posted at Camp Liberty in West Baghdad, but they were also in Fallujah, Ramadi, Camp Taji, and two or three other forward operating bases. So in other words, I was moving around the country to be with troops. On this day, one of my units was rolling through a kill zone and came under coordinated attack. IEDs or road bombs went off in synchronized order on this convoy of five Humvees. Four soldiers were wounded, two critically. One female ended up losing her leg. When this happened, I was visiting other troops at Camp Taji, and at the time waiting for a Black Hawk helicopter to take me back to Liberty. Standing on the tarmac, I received word of this incident. Once I arrived back at Camp at Liberty, I was taken directly to this military police company's tactical operations center where a convoy was being assembled and uploaded so we could go in to meet these troops who were being rushed into the 10th Combat Support Hospital in the IZ, the International Zone, then known as the Green Zone. So I waited until we got all set, did our pre-roll brief, and within about 30 minutes, we began our movement across Camp Liberty to one of the seven major entry control points to go through all the various requisite checks. And finally, we rolled off posts through security gates to make our way into central Baghdad. I asked before we left how long this would take, and they said this would be about a 20-minute trip. I was very new. I had only been there about a month. Well, 40 minutes later, I knew something was not right. And five minutes after that, looking out the left rear window of the Humvee in which I was traveling, there were five of us, five Humvees, I could see that we were deep into a very narrow street and crawling at about five miles an hour. And chatter on the radio inside our cabin confirmed my suspicion. We were seriously lost. So there we were. Five Hummers on a very narrow street, which had dead-ended. People stopping to stare, running up and down our convoy, faces and windows of homes and shops. And we're at the same time attempting to make a U-turn on a street that wasn't a whole lot wider than this center aisle. Actually, they were, ended up being five or six point turns. But I actually thought to myself in those moments, expletives deleted. If this weren't so dangerous, it would be comical. Sometimes U-turns are casually made, and even with humorous deflections. This U-turn was made at a time of crisis. This was dangerous. We needed to change direction right away. 
About 20 minutes later, after finally getting reoriented, sneaking our way through Baghdad, we entered the IZ and made our way to the 10th Combat Support Hospital to join our fellow soldiers, where many of us ended up staying for about 10 hours while these troops came through their various surgeries. Lent, Ash Wednesday, is a time in life for us to look inside, look around, and consider the need for possibly making a U-turn in life, or at least some course corrections. Ash Wednesday seeks to invoke a crisis, meaning a turning point or a decisive moment. It is time to look again closely at our lives, the wrong directions and self-absorptions, deceptions, the compromises of good, that we cave to, or maybe even initiate, that lead us into a captivity of our own small freedoms, rather than the true freedom God wants to give to us. Ash Wednesday, Lent, is a time many of us need to make a U-turn in life for life, and all leading back to God, giving us new and contrite hearts. The Book of Common Prayer speaks of this. It's throughout the scriptures. In Paul's letter to the church in Rome, he writes, do you not realize that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? And so we pray that the good Lord would make in us new and contrite hearts. The heart it speaks of is not the fist-sized organ that sustains life within us for a time, but rather the wellspring within us which floods our attitudes, aspirations, desires, morals, achievements, hopes, and even dreams. And it is the heart from where love comes. We love from the heart. Our life's purpose and its fulfillment or final sadness or emptiness our identity, which no disguise of personality can hide, are all bound up in this. And there is no escape from the direction that our hearts are set upon. A new heart, a contrite heart, then, is what the scriptures tell us we need. And the church, and this day, Ash Wednesday and Lent, is God's gift to show and provide the way. Lent is a time to face this, and it is on this day that we start with ashes. They are an ancient symbol of humanity's humility and penitence. They're at once ancient, simple, and eloquent. They speak of the worthlessness of what remains after fire has consumed. And so they tell us of the worth of human ambition and achievement when besmirched by pride and disobedience to the demands of a loving God. It is in coming to this place that we know for many of us a U-turn is in order. And with our ashes and those visible to us, we are made to see the divine judgment upon the ambitions and achievements of hearts that are fat and stony, hardened or imprisoned by the petty freedoms of the self. But this we cannot forget also, lest we think our God is some demanding taskmaster keeping a record of our every thought and action. 
we cannot forget that God loves us as he judges us. And indeed, his most severe judgment is his love. One look at the cross tells us this. One theologian has said that God does not offer us the forgiveness of the cross after we have come to him in contrition and remorse. Rather, God holds out to us the forgiveness of the cross as an initial gesture in the hope that it might lead to a recognition of the depth of our sin and then make the path of repentance not a crushing humiliation, but a self-forgetful opening of the heart to that divine love. For a brief time, then, the smudge of ashes we receive is the turn signal for our U-turns. I've always been strangely moved by the sight of them on foreheads across this day and across years as we, in solidarity, are moved to repent, to say sorry to God, to turn our hearts and live once again towards God's immeasurable love. And it is only by God's grace that we can do this. That immeasurable love calls for a response. And our judgment hinges on whether we will respond with what we do with God's love poured into our hearts. I know I have at times, and too many, squandered that love in loving myself more than God and those God who is placed before me and in this path of life. There are too many ways to squander God's gift of love by cheaping in it in loving others cheaply or insisting to possess and control those we love or simply pulling back and throwing up walls. Yet we also may reflect his love in those moments when we can show patient love, in our sacrificial self-offering of love, in our love of the good and noble causes, and in our enduring love for those who suffer. To quote my beloved former rector and mentor, now the late John Andrew of St. Thomas Church, Fifth Avenue in New York, the fire of the divine judgment, which is God's love burning its righteous path through history, comes near to us, as it does. Our hearts respond to the warmth of that fire of love, and our judgment lies in that response. Your presence here this day is a good and hopeful sign of your intent, of the desire to turn your life toward God with some course corrections, or maybe even when, with a U-turn. And that U-turn back towards God really is a matter of life and death at its most profound. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Dear friends in Christ, at the Christian Passover, we celebrate year by year our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Since early days, the church has kept the season of Lent as a time of preparation for Easter. We begin Lent by remembering the need for repentance. So let us ask God to bless these ashes to our use. They have been made from the palms with which we greeted Christ our King with joy last Palm Sunday. They are a sign that we mean to prepare ourselves with penitence for Easter. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, bless these ashes to our use and grant that they may remind us of our mortality and of our need of repentance, so that we may keep Lent faithfully in preparation for the joy of Easter. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Deliver me from 
Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you for gracing us with your presence and your, and your prayers as together we mark the beginning of our Lenten walk with Jesus and with one another. I'm so glad to see you and to, um, to share this moment with you. As is the custom when Christians gather and worship, we turn now to the table of communion, uh, the remembrance of Jesus' last supper with his friends, and, um, and partake of that symbolic meal. It's, after the prayers are said, we invite you to come forward to receive. Um, simply place your hand and if you'd like to receive the, the host and then take a sip of wine. Or if you would prefer a blessing, uh, you may come forward. And if you demonstrate with your arms across your chest, we will uh, gladly pray with you in that moment. May God bless you. May God guide you and show you all that is yours to learn and discover in this holy time. Let us then walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O gracious God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, each in our own language, the prayer of your heart. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be you.
praying together. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these inestimable gifts and also daily endeavor to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we bow before our God, let us pray. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.